Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and we are continuing our conversation with Sherry Matherly. And just a powerful first day as we talk about grief. And as I've been doing this program for over seven months, God has been so good to us. I want to thank so many people that financially make this possible, whether it's a $25 gift or it's a $1,000 gift, several $500 gifts. We could not do this. Uh, It is tax deductible, but thank you so much for making this possible to be on the radio and to make these podcasts available. Uh, Right near the end of June, the last weekend of June, we actually had went over our 8,000th podcast that's been listened to, and I just am amazed what God has done. Uh, Over 30 states, from Connecticut to California, people are listening to Hope is Here uh, internationally, seven foreign countries at least. I haven't checked for uh, the past week, but just God is doing some great things, and I'm humbled, I'm grateful, I'm thankful. And Sherry Matherly, we had back on in mid-January, I believe January 20th or 21st was the first day, but January 22nd was one of the most listened to podcasts we have had in the seven months of Hope is Here. It was entitled Shot and Left to Die, and it's Sherry's powerful story. So I would encourage you, if you missed yesterday's program, where we started talking about grief and getting healing for your soul, Or if you didn't get to hear Sherry's story about overcoming being tragically shot in the head, close range, uh, which I say tragic is a tragedy, but it's not tragic because she's still here to talk about it. Go to our website, hopeishere.today. That is simply hopeishere.today, and you can scroll down and find that in January. and listen to those programs, and then you sure don't want to miss yesterday's program. But, Sherry, you were in a powerful part yesterday. We talked about grief. You shared a great book that people can hear about. The best thing I love is that you are willing to step out of your comfort zone and go see a grief counselor through Bluegrass Care Navigators. And you said that the counselor uh, helped you see a couple things. One, you talked about the mason jar and share that about the mason jar, then the two things you learned from the grief counselor. The Mason Jar story just really liked my world. I'm a stuffer. I, my emotions, whatever, I stuff things down. <laughs> I said that my legs should be overflowing, but I stuff so much stuff down. <laughs> but I said, like, imagine your grief as you take your heart and you put them in a Mason Jar. You stuff them in a Mason Jar and you screw the lid on and you put them on this shelf. You keep doing that. Then you eventually you put so much in there that your shelf breaks. Mm. So... My last two big time things that I had, my big time loss was, I cannot, they told me I could not drive anymore. I was, I was driving after I got shot, um, even though I still, I have no peripheral vision, but they still let me drive, I was okay, I just, I just had to be careful. But um, when I went to VA to get glasses, they did a special kind of test to see there's blind spots where I can't see, and they told me that I wasn't legal to drive at all. So, um, I can't drive, so that's a big loss. Um, that's huge. It's for huge. me, that's... <laughs> for anybody, that's, I mean, I want you to think today, if you're listening, okay, you may have some really challenging things going on in your life, and I don't want to make light of that in any form or fashion, because pain is pain, but I want you to think about if all of a sudden you were told one day, I'm sorry, but you can never drive again. Now, some people are like, well, I can drive, but I don't have a car, okay? But Sherry had a car. She worked hard at Toyota for 14 years, and so that was not the issue. But being told, I just want you to think, your life, put it in perspective real quickly. What if you were told you could not drive anymore? How much your life would change? Because you went from a very independent person to, to a, a very, very dependent person. Now. And that's not who you are. That's humbling, isn't it? That's the, Yes. <laughs> that's very, and I have, still had trouble with that, and I'm working on that because I hate to ask people to take me somewhere. And I hate to ask people, because Kroger's are right down the street. I hate to ask somebody to take Will you run me down to Kroger's to get medicine? Can you run me to Kroger's to get groceries? Can you do run me here, run me there? And it's a very short drive. I mean, it's like a yeah. three, t- three minute drive yeah. if you get caught by the light. If yeah. you get the green light, it's like 45 <laughs> exactly. seconds. Exactly. So, but, but just have to ask somebody to do that when, you know, when I, to me, I, I can do it, but I can't. And just accept that. And that's another thing about grief. My mentor had a, there's five stages of grief, which I didn't understand. But one of them is denial. And denial is um, acceptance, too. So accepting that I can't drive, that's 
very hard. That's been that's what that's probably been the hardest thing ever. I think for me is not being able to drive. But that's a big loss. And then the, sec- the second big loss that probably broke broke the shelf with my mason jar. <laughs> I love that. Is my ma- is my best neighbor across the street that mm-hmm. I love dearly. They moved. They sold the house and moved. And that that just did me in. <laughs> I know that's crazy. You, no, well, that's not crazy because I mean, you guys talked and saw each other yeah, almost yeah, every day, yeah, right? Yeah, we did. We were, we were, yeah. I kept her dog. She kept my dog. You know, she'd feed me supper. I'd, <laughs> I'd take her supper. You know, we were just good. We were just good friends. I was friends with her mama, her mother, and me and her mother still texting each. I still see her. But she moves. She's not right across the street. Just knowing that I can't just run over there and say, "Hey, I'm coming over." You know, or. I need to talk. Yeah, I want to see I to somebody. Over. i got to share what yeah, happened. Yeah. You know? Can I just come over? Hey, do you have something chocolate I can have? And run over there and get it. <laughs> Absolutely. I need a cup of sugar. You yeah, know, exactly. It's all those and little so, things. That was the, those were the two. That was the last one that broke my shelf of <laughs> my mason jar. Well, I, agree. I love that. Two things there that you shared. The, through the grief counselor, I want to encourage you. Uh, Bluegrass Care Navigators, formerly known as Hospice of the Bluegrass. You can put in Hospice of Bluegrass. It probably would still come out if you Googled that. But, you know, Sherry was willing to deal with this grief, this pain. And two of the things she realized, and I bet it, I know with all my heart today that somebody's listening and that you've been in denial about something you know you've heard the joke a lot of times denial is not the river in africa you know the nile sherry's like oh i never heard that but you know a lot of you you know uh denial and i've been there myself and done it uh when i went through my second divorce not by my choice and um you know, I thought I would be able to have children and be a dad, and that didn't happen. And uh, I don't think I really grieved that loss. And, you know, it's been, gosh, I don't know, nine, ten years later, God's been so good. But uh, I've really, la- in the last year, just come to realize that that was a major loss because I always thought I'd be a dad. Now, God's blessed me. I've been able to invest in other kids with my time and finances. But still, you know, nothing like having your own kids. And, you know, I foster parented some, so I don't want you to think, well, you can foster parent. I've done all that stuff. But as a, a, a single man, that, that can be tough. And so I've had to come to acceptance with that. And people have said, you know, well, you know, you could still, you're not too old. I turned 53 in June, even though I look 43. Don't laugh, Sherry. Okay. But, you know, what? I, I've come to accept that. I'm okay with that. And I just try to love on other other people's kids and, and um, you do. it's all good and then you know the neighbor thing you talked about you know and once again you lost all these relationships at work so exactly. then you develop this close relationship neighbor and then she's gone and then she's gone and that's that that just broke my broke my <laughs> that's the mason jar that broke my shelf and uh so i just have to i just have this grief and going to this um grief council just I've learned that you have to you have to acknowledge your your grief. You have to acknowledge your losses. That's not a sign of weakness, and I think in our country, and especially even for followers of Jesus, we think it's weakness if we admit we hurt over loss. Is that fair? Exactly, exactly. And that's one thing I've learned about me. So I've, I think I'm a fairly strong person, <laughs> um, and just admitting that I was hurt. And I don't think I've ever really grieved over being shot, to tell you the truth. I don't think I ever have really ever grieved over that. Until you listen to those programs that day, yeah. you really yeah. hadn't, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's just thought no. that really happened. Yeah, I know. And just, you know. Fifteen years later. Yeah, exactly. But but here I am. God is so good. And I think about, because um, he said, my husband said, you picked a fine day to die. But um, God said, no, she didn't. <laughs> Amen. Because Psalms 139 says, all the days ordained for you are written in this book. So, And I had that written in my Bible by Psalms 139 by that verse. It said, Stan said you picked a fine day to die. But God said. <laughs> Amen. I love it. So, but um, What are some other scriptures on grief that God has, so, that you have read and that really my helped mentor, you? Pat Roche at my church, my mentor that's awesome. She had me write down. She encouraged me to start looking up scripture about grief. And I started doing that. Now, two of them that I've really loved start with Genesis 16, 11, and Hagar, uh, the, the mother of Ishmael, Abraham's mister, uh, talk about whether, but Jesus said, the Lord has heard, heard of your misery. The Lord heard her misery. And that just, you know, the Lord hears you. 
But my first one and is... what was that? Judges? Is that uh, right? No, Genesis 16. Genesis, Genesis what? 1611. Genesis 1611. Okay, what else? But the one that really makes me happy is Exodus 3, 7. The Lord said, I have indeed seen the misery of my people in Egypt. I have heard their crying out, and that I am concerned about their suffering. And just know that he hears and he he hears and he see he sees he sees our misery he sees our he sees our grief and he hears our misery he hears our crying out you know it may not be audible I mean, we not, may not be saying it out loud all the time right. maybe in our heart we're saying it absolutely you know, you know? well Psalm forty eighteen is one that's really helped me and comforted me over the years and I share with a lot of my friends when they lose a loved one but even like you've done such a good job yesterday and today saying you know grief is not just when you have a physical death of somebody that you love it's from job relationships neighbors uh, ability to drive I mean these are major losses it may not be sometimes a physical body person that you lose which is painful but i love that you said god cares about it. in the book of psalms david so oh, i know oh my goodness in the great psalm 34 18's helped me and i've shared <laughs> a lot of friends over the years the That's lord right. is close to the brokenhearted and he comforts those crushed in spirit i love the bible i mean that you know bible's for weak people crushed in spirit is not a weak saying no no and you had told me write down a couple of scriptures i thought i wish there's tw i can have 25 million <laughs> that's one of them <laughs> so, i mean it's just the bible is like you say the bible is also just so much comfort that's psalms 23 is my my life verse and he says he comforts us and that's how he's comfortable with this word so if you're saying this word you'll get comfort and stuff but i want to share just a couple of um definition of grief i found yesterday i was looking i found a website it's called the grief um the grief recovery method i found this website but it said one definition the basic definition of grief is that's the, the normal and natural emotional reaction to loss or change of any kind so it's loss or a change even mm, say that one more time please huh repeat that again please that definition grief is the normal and normal and natural emotion react emotional reaction to loss or change of any kind I love it. It's natural. Okay, right. we want to think that once again, even especially followers of Jesus, that if we feel that pain, that we're weak and we're not people of faith. And friends, you know, Jesus wept over the loss of his son. Uh, I mean, his friend Lazarus. Then you say, well, God doesn't understand. God knows what it's like to lose a child. He had exactly. to turn his back on his own son. So God knows that his friends betrayed him. Exactly. I mean, he know Jesus, exactly. Judas, right? I mean, God exactly. understands. He right? does. Yeah, he does. And and it says that it's, uh, it's a normal, normal, and natural. So it's, it's mm. normal reaction exactly i think a lot of times we make people think that it's not natural or normal and we're wanting you today and that's why i'm doing these two programs and we're going to do a third one tomorrow and so i want you to tune into that but grief is something i believe with all my heart in fact i'm thinking about writing a book on it i told sherry that early for the program uh we had sherry beth daly that did three programs on grief that you really ought to check out at our website hope is here dot today we're going to tell you continue tomorrow with sherry matherly so make sure you tell a friend if you tuned in late you can catch the podcast of this go to our website hope is here dot today my name is greg horn i hope you'll join sherry matherly and i tomorrow as we continue our conversation about getting healthy in your soul on hope is here CMI is your full-service human resources provider in Central Kentucky. For 15 years, CMI Human Resources has taken great pride in helping organizations and people work. Whether it's employee handbooks or help in filling a position, no job is too large or too small for CMI. Contact the professionals today at CMI Human Resources, 859-296-2800 or online at cmiconsulting.com.